Hi everybody, we're back. And what we have here now is we're going to talk about the uh, alpha beta pruning piece of Minimax. This works the same way. You go off the same algorithm of Minimax, propagate the values up. But while you're doing it, you might be able to chop off whole portions of the tree that we don't need to look at. And why is this important? Well, you remember from doing iterative depth for search and doing the 8 puzzle, 15 puzzle, rather, when you go down, each time you evaluate a node, you have to do a heuristic evaluation, you get the board state, you have to consider it, you have to decide which way to move, you have to add it to the list. There's some bookkeeping there, and there's also some runtime there. Now, the runtime of the algorithm is driven, basically, by the evaluation at each node, because the rest of the stuff is, is just your main loop, right? There's nothing going on there. So the more nodes you can cut out, the better. That means the further down the tree you can look in directions that make sense to go further down, because they give a more positive evaluation function. So that's the big goal here. And it turns out you can do this in an ingenious way, and we're going to go through that right now. So without further ado, let's try. So the same basic board, same numbers. I didn't change anything from last time. I'm not trying to fool you or trick you or anything. I just want you to understand. So x moves, x moves first, and that x is max for the purposes of the discussion. And then O moves, and O is min for the purposes of the discussion. And then the end of the game at the bottom here, which has various evaluation states. Like I mentioned in the last uh, video, you have to suspend a little bit of belief to uh, to make this mapping here. Let's assume we have mega tic tac where the end states are assigned different values based on some arbitrary person's decision of this board is better or worse. So the end states have very different values. You can easily see how this applies to other games. Um, for this purpose, I'm just kind of waving my hands at the mapping of evaluation here. So now what happens is x moves first, o moves, and then end state. So we're going to start the same way. We're going to go left and left simply because left first always makes sense in this random algorithm uh, creation. So in your algorithm, just always go down the first thing you see to make it easy. So you go down the first, the first path you see, which is this one, and then you go down the first path you see from that state, which is this one. And what we have here is three. Now this is min's move now. So min gets to make this decision, remember, or O. And min or O here sees a three. So that means that without looking at anything else now, we just look at this one state, what do we know? We know that the move value can be somewhere between negative infinity and 3, which is why this is done in the board. Now, what does that mean? That means we could have a lower value here. So without having seen these values yet, this value could be negative 26, it could be negative 2 billion, whatever, or it could be positive 2 billion or whatever. Now, if it is positive more than 3, we don't care because we would never pick it. We've already seen 3, and if we have a higher number, remember we want to minimize this number because it's our min's move here, so we would never ever pick that, which is why we have an upper bound on 3. We'll never pick anything over 3, and we have a lower bound on negative infinity because we haven't seen it yet. It could be less than 3, but we don't know how much less than 3. So with that in mind, now we go to the second state. When you're going down the very first the very first uh, end piece triangle here, you always have to look at all three, all of the nodes, because you don't, uh, you won't know otherwise any better. I'll get to why that is in a minute. So go to the second one. Now we have a 12. This isn't going to change anything here, because now we have a 12. We're going to throw it out, because we already, have, already saw a 3. And 3 would be our minimum pick, not 12, because 12 is much bigger. And we still have the same range. We might still see something else, because we have one more node to look at. So we might see negative 2 billion, or we might see a larger number, but still we're only going to pick up to 3. So our upper bound is still 3. So now nothing's changed. So when we go back up, but we've had to look at it. So we looked at this one, we looked at that one, and now we look at the, the third and last one on this chain and see that it's an 8. Same thing, it's greater than 3, so we throw it out. And now this is not negative infinity anymore because we've explored all the nodes. So we know exactly what the range is. The range is 3 to 3. In other words, we're going to pick 3 because we know exactly. We've reviewed each one and seen that the minimum is 3. So we have no range, really, but it's represented in the book as 3 to 3. If you want to be specific about it, and they're just trying to be, um, trying to keep the notation consistent. OK, so now you're done with this whole evaluation here. And you know that at this point, O's best move is 3, as we discussed in the last, uh, last video. Now you go back up. You're going to go down to the, to the next node, which will be the middle one, just the next one you see. Again, no particular rhyme or reason to, to picking a next one other than just the next one. And 
now you're going to you have nothing here. Of course, you have to go down one more to get to the end state. So you go down one more, you get to the end state of this node, and you see a two. Now, if you do the same thing you did here, now the interval is minus infinity to two. But now, notice what happens here is that two is is the maximum value that min would pick. But here, min, remember I'm max, so I'm x here. Here, the maximum value is three. So me, me as x, thinking as, because it's a little confusing, so down here I was x thinking as o, and now I'm x down here thinking as o. I don't really care what any of these things are, because whatever it is, it's going to be at most, uh, it's going to be at most two, because min is going to pick two. So if this is 80 billion down on this next node, then min would still pick two. And if it was negative two billion, then min would pick negative two billion. I don't care because three was already found over here as min's best choice. Therefore, I don't even need to look at the rest of these. So I looked at this first one. Now I can do something interesting. I can just chop off these two and anything further down because it doesn't matter anymore. So let me go through that one more time. Hopefully that made sense. It's a little confusing. So I'm x and I'm max, and I'm thinking as min down here. Now down this node, I discovered that the value that that x's or sorry o's optimal move is three. Therefore, it's my best move so far. Now I look over here and I get an interval between negative infinity and two, which I think so we've discussed that. That's you can see a, a smaller number, and if you see a larger number, it doesn't matter because min would pick two. So thinking like min, the, the best that min can do, the best that O can do here, is pick two. But instead, I would always go over here because if I'm picking between these two, min's either going to get two or something lower than two, and I don't care because I'm already getting a three over here at minimum. Because min can't do any worse than three here, so he'll always pick the three, and therefore I would always pick that route and never this one. And there's no value down here that could make it any make that change at all. I hope that makes sense. So now you go over to to this last root. So we chopped off the rest of these. We only had to look at that one. Go over to this root over here. We'll try to flip around. So with D. Now we look at the first one again. We'll look at this one, and we see a 14. So now the interval is once again negative infinity to 14. Now, we have to keep looking here because what happens is thinking like min here, thinking like O, this is O's move, thinking like O, O would consider a, a possibly lesser move, right? So if any of these are lower, then min would pick it. I'm sorry. If any of these are with a 14, Min, if min has no other choice but to pick something like a 14, like for example, all three of these nodes were 14, and we ended up with a 14 here, then I would want to pick this route, and I would want to know what's going on down here, because these might have been bigger. These might be 15, 16. If it's 14, 15, 16, min would pick 14, and therefore I'd go this direction. I don't know yet, because I've only looked at this one. I haven't looked at these yet. So I can't yet chop anything off, because this could actually be my best move so far with the interval of infinity and 14. Again, the trick is to watch the interval maximum numbers on min and to watch the minimum numbers on max when you flip it around. So my best move so far is 3, but now it's 14, so I have to look at the next node. So I go down here and look at this one and get a 5. Now, remember, we're thinking like min here. So min is going to take the minimum value, and they're going to pick 5 in this case. Still, this is my best move because I have a 3 and a 2, which I'm not going to pick. So I have a 3, and now I have a 5 over here. And so this is still my best move. So I still need to keep looking because I might have found even better node here. And then I might end up with a 5 or a 4 or something else, which would still be behoove me to pick. And I need to know this exact value so I can know what my best move is further up the tree as I propagate. And remember, this is just the ending state. You know, a big tree like this would typically have a lot more nodes to it, as I think you can imagine for a big game. So again, I have to look at the very last state, and here I see a 2. And now my interval is 2 to 2, because I know the exact minimum value. I'm thinking like min 
here, and I want to pick two always. So I'm going to pick two, and then my best option is this way. But you see what happened here is this is a bummer because if I didn't find out until the end, and had I gone the other way, I would have found out. But if I didn't go here until the end, I wouldn't know that this was actually worse for me, for X, than this one all the way over here. So unfortunately, you can't prune anything in that case. And that's why this example was written this way to kind of show you that. And move back over here again. So what happened here is we did actually chop off two nodes here. And so we in increased uh, significant performance. Because remember, when you chop off these nodes, you chop off everything below it. And these nodes expand at an exponential branching factor going forward. So in this is a very simple example, it's only two. But in a complex example, if you take this big tree over here with thousands and billions of nodes flying off of it, if we chopped off, say, this whole branch here and removed this whole piece of the tree, then we chopped off a significant portion of the tree itself. And the book goes through, and your homework asks you to understand this a little bit, how to determine exactly how many nodes you can chop off and what that means. And I'm not going to give any of that away because it's a nice homework assignment that I want you to think about. But I want you to understand how to go through this process, the algorithm, the example in the book, and to where these intervals are coming from because they're not all completely obvious. So I hope that helps. Please let me know if you have any questions. And hopefully these last-minute videos will